Before I begin this video, shout out to Tom Clancy Division's community. Shout out to the LCN clan. That is my main. My main game that I play is the Division and the Division 2. Spent a lot of time playing the game. And it does have something that pertains to this particular video as it relates to PlayStation's difficulties in launching a live service and kicking it off the ground. I might cross post this video on my division channel. I haven't made up my mind yet, but we know that Sony's plan for 12 live service PlayStation games by 2026 just got cut in half. Some people are mistaking this to mean that they're cutting half of them and not making them. But if you read the fine print, you will realize that the rest of the six will come later. The company plans to have six online. The rest will come later. So the others didn't go anywhere. As much as they probably shelved Concord, I think that might come back. However, let's look at why PlayStation needs a live service game. I've mentioned this in other videos, but for the sake of, you know, being able to be as clear as possible, we can take a look at why. Before Matt Piscatella deleted his X account, he used to post these weekly engagement photos and screenshots. And from there, you can see that the MPD data highlights that if you look at the top 10 played games on PlayStation, Xbox, and even, you know, PC, None of them, except in the case of Helldivers 2 somehow, are PlayStation games. And the Helldivers 2 shows up on PC side. So even the PlayStation fans aren't playing Helldivers 2. The Xbox fans, they locked it away from you. What can PlayStation do to get a live service game? Because right now, like I actually highlighted in one of my other videos, it doesn't seem like Fair Games is going to be it. It actually appears more likely that that game is going to get the Concord treatment. I think the approach that they need to take is the approach that games like GTA 5 took and also Tom Clancy's The Division. Now, let me go ahead and explain. The Division 1 was a largely successful game. It, at one point, sat in the charts with FIFA 2017 or 2016. I can't remember the one that comes out, how it comes out anymore. I stopped playing FIFA around 18. But that was a big year for Ubisoft. The game did so well, three weeks after launch, they pulled a team aside and started working on the sequel, which launched just three years later. That's insane for them to carve out an entire sequel, not just to a game, but to a live service game in three freaking years. What does the division have that made it actually resonate that much? There are many things. I can start out with the environment in New York. I can start out with the world. I can start out with the story, you know, building the lore and all of those things. And yes, these are elements that PlayStation's writers can excel in if they don't start looking for a phantom audience out there. And if they can take those elements and put it into their already set up production quality of the pipeline and create a 26 to 30 hour player experience and then tack on their live service element behind it, I think they have, in my opinion, some more of an increase in their percentage of being successful. Those who may enjoy the single player games on PlayStation, I know you underestimate what these live service games can do. But in reality, these live service games have pretty much served as a resource to bring the single player games to you. So if there's one live service game that does well, I think it probably still benefits for the most part, even those of you that like single player games, because it's live service games money that has brought you these single player games. If you take into account how much money PlayStation was raking in from just Call of Duty alone, you'll see that, yeah, that's some significant amount of money when you add it to other things. But now the Call of Duty money is no longer there in terms of them getting any special benefits or in terms of them getting any kind of, you know, bonuses that would allow for their platform to sell more and also be able to rake in cash from splits with Activision. Activision now belongs to the opposition. So I think that this is definitely the way that they need to go because a lot of their live service push is going to be new IP. So something that players have not necessarily, you know, in my opinion, seen before. In the case of the Spider-Man live service, they also cancel that. I think that was more of a tactical decision than anything else. That would have cost them a lot of money to run 
Remember, Marvel's Avengers, one of the reasons that they claimed that that game failed was simply because Square Enix was spending a whole bunch of money giving to Disney every single time. There's just no way that game would have been successful long term because they didn't have the player counts. And it was just kind of difficult because the sales were somewhat low to launch anything in terms of DLC without thinking of costs on the back end. In the case of the Division 1 and the Division 2, these IPs belong to Ubisoft and Ubisoft Massive Studio develops them with their other sister studios. So that setup and that structure always helps for them to not only be able to leverage every single revenue piece that they get, but a really interesting pipeline to continue to punch out content at that pace. So what PlayStation is going to need to do to convince people is bring out a game like that. Now, I mentioned GTA 5. GTA 5 is an open world game that allows for a sandbox, interesting single player elements, all of those interactions, and so on and so forth. But GTA is going to take a long time to make. There's no doubt about that. Like, if they try to make a game like that, it will take a while. However, a game like Watch Dogs is something that is at the scale that is not a GTA. And, you know, they can basically make a game that fulfills that sandbox niche. I'm not saying they should make the same thing as Watch Dogs. Or they can make a game like The Division that has a theme and a lore and go with that while they tack on their live service elements through, you know, just attached to it. I mean, if you look at the list and the chart that I just showed you just now, one of the games on that list and on that chart is GTA. GTA 5 is one of the top played games on not just the PlayStation, but the Xbox. A lot of folk are probably playing the online aspects too. And then even a game like Red Dead Redemption has an online, even though that game is huge and it's a very significant single player game you still have those elements in there. And I think the final piece of the puzzle is something that's probably going to maybe shock a lot of people. And that's just a simple fact that they probably need to go ahead and abandon exclusivity when they're trying to do something like this. And the simple fact is the economy right now does not allow for everybody to be too picky. They've already just dumped about maybe close to $200 million down the drain with Concord. So I don't necessarily think that their options are really that much. I mean, if a guy like me who's a PC player that's been mad at PlayStation for the longest time is trying to basically put out my suggestions of what I think they need to do in order for them to be able to be at least somewhat, uh, you know, profitable in their venture and still provide value because the 30 hour, 26 to 30 hour single player experience is still there, then you know that it's really rough for them. Now, you're not going to sit there and take some YouTubers, you know, comments seriously. They're not even watching the video. That's fine. But until they actually dial into that aspect of the entire, you know, uh, I, I, this entire setup and paradigm, I think they're going to continue to struggle because today and in this environment is not really the day that you just shoot out from your, you know, from your butt, uh, a, a live service game that's just ready to go off the shelves where we jump in PVP and start doing all this nonsense. Even Destiny didn't do that. Destiny had a lore had its own single player element and was able to bring people into its world in order for it to be able to eventually get them into their live service game. I think this is pretty much the mark of a lot of these games that have longevity in a saturated market. Not saying that you can't come out with a, you know, a, a game like Fortnite, but again, you would have had to be positioned at, at the right time to do so. And PlayStation has all it takes to be able to make this kind of game that I'm describing in this video the question is whether they're going to go ahead and actually do it. You see, that's another challenge that they do face. Gotham Knight seemed like it wanted to take that approach. People said, oh, the game is a live service game. No, it's not a live service game. It does have multiplayer. It does have some co-op in there, but it's not like The Division. It is set up like The Division, which is funny because many people say the game reminds them of Spider-Man. I'm like, no, it reminds me of The Division because the open world is kind of a living world that continues to regenerate activities for the player to do and also provides opportunity for the player to get better gear and better you know things to make the player much stronger this has always been the premise of gotham knight this is also the very same premise that the division actually does tout and so in seeing that moto and seeing that you know that particular paradigm with gotham knights it was easily recognizable what i think really hurt gotham knights was it didn't have the ps4 launch because that console would have really helped to push and carry it and give it the numbers that it needed for end game content, which is kind of your live service push. If we even were to take again to see, okay, how is this even viable? You see that a game like the division two right now, I don't have any footage for it on this computer is still over there selling skins every season and pretty much rehashing very similar content with different parameters and paradigms. And once in a while, they will add something fresh and something new to the mix. If PlayStation can follow this route, I really do think they have 
in my opinion, some, you know, semblance of success that can happen there. The only thing is it's going to take a little bit of time and it's going to cost a little bit of money. So they need to get to it if they really want to do it. Are they going to do it? Hey, it's up to them. I don't care. Hopefully the next division game comes out. We're looking forward to playing it. And people in the division community themselves, they're, you know, in a sense, looking for somebody who would make a game like the division. So if PlayStation is going to make it, then they might as well, you know, somebody might as well make it and put some weight behind it and get Ubisoft Massive, you know, a little bit of fire on their butts so that they can pretty much knock out everything that they're doing for the Division 3 from the park, knowing that somebody big enough is coming right behind them. These are my thoughts. I'd love to hear yours in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching the video. Appreciate you guys' time and audience, and hopefully we'll talk pretty soon in another one. Peace out.